here. So I'm going to say what's up in the chat, and then I'm going to go through what's happening in LA. So I, I, I don't know, probably four or five months ago, I sold my house in LA. Now, right now, I'm in New York City and experiencing the changes in both LA and New York over the last 12 months is really unbelievable. But to me, it looks like we're just beginning this series of change. And I'm gonna walk you through what's happening. So last week I reported on a very prominent individual and what happened in Truesdale Estates in Beverly Hills. This lady, unfortunately, was, uh, she was, ended up, she was executed, unfortunately, by someone in her home. And she was very prominent. Her husband was in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, lived up and down the street from 30, 40, 50, 80 million dollar mansions. The least expensive home in that community is probably $7 million, just to give context. Well, now things have only escalated from there. Now, I'm going to say what's up in the chat. I'm going to walk you guys through what's going on. What's up, everybody? So take a look at this. This is really wild to me. To I never thought, like, to me, this always seems like something that will be in a movie. But L.A. Detective compares The Purge to Los Angeles due to crime rise. This came out today. Imagine that. I mean, we've all seen the movie The Purge. Who would have actually thought that that could actually be you know, a real life situation. He goes on to say that Los Angeles Police Department detective is warning people not to come to the city as incidents of smash and grab and follow home robberies have risen. Follow home robberies are very, very, uh, they're, they're growing in popularity because essentially they can size somebody up based on their watches. They're, these criminals are actually getting, they're getting so smart because if you're wearing, let's say a paddock, or a Richard Mealy, they know that that watch is probably 150, 200, 300, 500 thousand dollars. And if you have that on your wrist, who knows what you have at your house? And so they can follow you home. And in that scenario, it's less likely you're going to, you know, be around people that are going to call the cops on them. So they they're more enticed to do that. So Jay McBride is also director of Los Angeles Police Protective League. In appearance on Fox Monday. McBride told anchors that he's telling people do not visit because we don't think we can keep you safe right now, comparing L.A. to the movie Purge. But instead of 24 hours to commit your crime, they have 365 days. McBride blamed the crime surge on things like Proposition 47, which changed sentencing guidelines, as well as the state's zero bail policy, which he puts criminals back on the street faster than the officers can finish the report. Last week, LAPD Chief Micah Moore and LA Mayor Eric Garcetti announced 14 arrests in connection with a series of smash and grab robberies spanning late November. All 14 of those people were taken into custody later released due to the state's zero bail policy. In order to fix the problem, McBride suggested starting from the top with Governor Gavin Newsom through called out local officials last week saying that the shoplifters should be prosecuted, calling the spate of robberies unacceptable. The governor has also promised a proposed budget. He sends the state lawmakers next month will significantly increase our efforts to go after retail rings. Many policing changes were made in response, right? So this party happened in the Pacific Palisades. So if you don't know how Los Angeles is laid out, you have Hollywood Hills here, right? Hollywood Hills, everyone knows Hollywood. It goes Hollywood, Hollywood Hills. Then it goes Beverly Hills, then Bel Air, and then you have Brentwood, Pacific Palisades, Malibu, right? And so when we're looking at this map, this is where this laid out, Palisades. The least expensive home in this community is showing you that money does not buy you safety. This was in the Palisades. So you have homes, 79 mil, 24. This is 16 and a half, 10.2. 30 mil, 11 mil, eight and a half. The least expensive home inside of the Palisades right now for sale above $5 million, even without the $5 million price tag. Because that was that was preset. I mean, they're all, you know, 46, five. You have you you don't have any homes in, in the two to three to four million dollar range. Oh, here, there's one for 3.65. This is the least expensive home. Oh no, 2.25 over here. That's the least expensive home, but this is, you know, just a, a nothing burger, just a, a bungalow. It's nice. It's beautiful, right? But 
in, in comparison to the adjacent properties, this is not anything spectacular. All these homes, I would probably say the median home price is probably somewhere around $10 million, 10 to 12. You have 79, 30, 11, 46.5, 15.5, right? And so two people, they're robbed at gunpoint during the holiday party in the Palisades. And so how this went down is a frightening armed robbery shut down a holiday party in the Palisades. Surveillance video obtained by Eyewitness News shows two suspects entering a side gate that was open and walking through another gate into the home. Two of the party goers, party goers came upstairs to get some of their belongings. They were held at gunpoint and were asked for their iPhones, wallets, Apple Watch. One of them had jewelry, said the homeowner who wished to remain anonymous. She said men were not known to the guests. I hope they get caught in people. Just be aware, said the homeowner. Lock your door. I never thought people would come in during a holiday party. That's the state of the world today. Meanwhile, in another crime investigation in L.A., the Los Angeles Police Department released video of a flash mob robbery at the Nordstrom store at Topanga Westfield Mall that occurred on November 24th, so about two weeks ago. Security guard was assaulted and sprayed in the face with bear spray while the store was open, right? So, Again, th this is the this is the layout of the land for the people that don't know Los Angeles. The layout of the land here, when you see how this is why I think that everything is going to be so uh, so obvious for me anyway to see how this goes was is this here all of the money in L.A. for the most part. Now I'm going to put this back as a, a price point here of, say, $5 million again. You're going to see all the money, for the most part, is either along the coastline or on the other side of Sunset. And all the other properties here are relatively inexpensive. So when word continues getting out that people can do these things, and the police department literally it says that, hey, it's like the movie The Purge, and instead of it just being one night, it's 365 days a year, they're gonna people are gonna feel untouched, right? They're gonna feel untouchable. So what are they gonna do? They're obviously gonna go where the opportunity a lot relies, really, which is gonna be here. It's gonna be in these prime areas, right? And it's a shame because I think things are, as I mentioned, like only gonna get crazier and crazier, especially with like a lot of the new uh, regulations that kind of support behavior that otherwise would not be supported, right? 200 robberies reported last week alone. More said homicides have gone up 50% since 2019. Aggravated assaults up 16%. LA Police Department Michael Moore said he's working more aggressively to go after criminals and seek full prosecution as the city sees an alarming spike in violent crimes. During our virtual news conference on Tuesday, Moore spoke candidly about the increase in crimes and said he's increasing patrols to curb the violence. Right now, I believe that the efforts of the last year and a half or so create at least a perception of a more permissive environment for people that have the ability to go out there and engage in this type of conduct. We are talking about here with no consequence. They have no consequence. They have zero bail. Policies mean in some instances, suspects are quickly re released from custody after they're arrested and booked for the crimes, the zero bail policy was designed to reduce jail populations. Two years ago, a person arrested would be in custody and set to be arranged in 72 hours. Today, that process with zero bail, that person is in and out of the back of the community in the next court appearance in your arrangement. That's four to five months out. Moore said homicide. Like, it, it's just crazy to me to see how fast things are kind of getting out of control. When you have the police department issuing a statement saying that, hey, it's not a good idea for people to visit Los Angeles and we can't guarantee your safety. And you have some of the most exclusive communities having consistent problems. That's a sign that we are definitely stepping into a different type of world. And as I mentioned in, in former videos, I do believe the future for Los Angeles, for New York City, for a lot of cities in America, is going to be private security, is going to be paramount. Even sending your kids to school, it's going to be wise, if you can afford it, to have a security guard or have some type of support system. Because 
these criminals, if they have a way to where they're, you know, they're more incentivized to, or they're more protected in getting caught or any type of crime, they're, they're likely going to do things that are going to be in their best interest. And when the police departments have, you know, their hands are almost tied in many regards, what's likely going to happen is that crime is going to continue increasing. And any criminal that has half a brain is going to go after people that actually have something worth taking, right? And it's pretty obvious when you go into Los Angeles or New York City or any of these communities, which neighborhoods likely have more valuables inside of their homes, inside of their cars than other neighborhoods, right? And so we see this. It's it's fascinating to me when we're looking at these smash and grabs because they're just like they're plaguing all of the cities. Uh, Black Friday saw news reports, robberies in Minneapolis, Los Angeles, Chicago, high-end stores in San Fran, vandalized thousands, right? But what's happening here is that they are now seeing, like, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot uh, accused retailers of not doing enough to combat the crime. She's accusing them. It's fascinating, right? Interesting. Uh, we still have retailers that won't institute plans of having security officers in their stores. You have to also remember, when you say have security officers in your store, it, it, of course, everyone would love to have additional support. But if you're paying these security guards 15 or 18 or $20 an hour, and they're working 10 hours a day, and that's an extra $200 in expense, if you factor that in on 20 days worth of working, I mean, you do the numbers, it is going to be an astronomical sum of money that you're going to have to continue forking out when you factor in the fact that they get you know, sick paid leave and they get additional benefits that are outside of the actual cost of hiring that employee. You factor all this stuff in, you're almost paying $25, $28 an hour for an employee. It's not viable for many small businesses. Of course, if you're a Gucci or Prada or you're a high-end luxury store, you know, selling average merchandise around $800 or $1,000, of course it would make sense to spend $200 or $300 a day to hire the right staff. But if you're selling, you know, $20, $30 items, you're going to have to sell you know, you're going to have to sell a lot of items to make to make it really worth hiring that security guard. So they're pushing it back in the stores, and they're saying making sure you have cameras that are actually operational, locking up their merchandise at night. So you need to invest in the cameras. You need to invest in the infrastructure to secure your goods, chaining high-end bags. These perks can be something that is attracting a lot of organized retail units. So the big question that I ask myself is when you have cities that are not properly managed and you have crime that's out of control, right? What does that mean for someone making $200,000 a year or $300,000 a year that, you know, they, they love wearing nice clothing. They like to go out and go to nice restaurants, live in the nice side of town. They enjoy these things. You know, they work hard for it and they, you know, they work 70, 80 hours a week for this, right? What are they going to do when, when they can't go outside at night safely and not really you know, look over the shoulder? Likely, they're going to consider alternative options, maybe moving outside of the city. I personally think that if crime continues skyrocketing in a lot of cities, what's going to happen is we're going to see a completely different shift in real estate. I think we could see more people desiring to live on a farm, live on a ranch, live, you know, live a little bit further, tucked out working from home and then commuting into the city for meetings and appointments when they have to work in the city. But when you have situations where you're just right in the city and you're in the most prominent neighborhoods, like all of these prime neighborhoods, these are the best neighborhoods to be in. I mean, when you look at how, so I'm going to give you guys like a, a quick little tour here. So the best communities are going to be Right, obviously, like Amalfi Drive and the Palisades, really beautiful right around here, right? I mean, you have really big names like Tom Hanks and a lot of people living here. And then you cross over here, you go to Holmby Park, you have P. Diddy that lives like right around here. You had the Playboy Mansion that was right here. You have uh, a lot of really, really beautiful homes um, like Gigi Kadi, they live like right around here. Michael Jackson's estate was right here. So you have all of these beautiful homes. Uh, Bieber owned a home around here, and he also owns another house uh, in Brentwood Park, or Beverly Park. You have all these beautiful, beautiful homes here, Bird Streets. 
some really big names, Leonardo DiCaprio, a lot of big, big names live in the Bird Streets. These are all, like, you look at these price points, right? This is where people, I think, are going to target. Like, I think if, if people start to say, hey, you know, the even the police chief saying there's nothing we can do, really, and it's like the movie The Purge, people are going to say, hey, you know, $20 million house, odds are they probably have $200,000, $300,000 worth of jewelry in the house. Or they, if they have a $200,000 G-Wagon, odds are they probably have some some nice things in there. And I think that we're going to likely start to see more organized crime in these communities. It's very unfortunate. I personally love Los Angeles. I, you know, I loved it pre all this. New York City, beautiful, pre all of this. Now they're starting to step into a whole different direction where, you know, I wouldn't personally walk my son to on Venice Beach Boulevard or the uh, the boardwalk there in Venice Beach. I wouldn't take him there now. I wouldn't feel safe. And those homes in those neighborhoods are two, three million dollars for a decent home in, in Venice Beach. And Venice Beach is almost like a slum these days. So it's it's really unbelievable to see how fast things are changing in these prime areas. I'm going to say uh, what's up in the chat and kind of read through some of these comments. Let's see here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely need some big change. We definitely need some very, very big change. Uh, just put a target. Left these cities. L.A., San Fran. Yeah, one of my good friends just left San Fran. And, like, their relative, like, they were staying in, a, in their relative's house. It was, like, you know, four, four and a half million dollar house. Really nice house in the city. You can't take your car into San Fran. Like, when you go into the, the actual, like, the park, the really nice neighborhoods, like, off the Embarcadero, your car's getting broken into if you have anything inside of that car, right? And that that's Silicon Valley. Like, that that's the real, the Silicon hub of bright minds, people making two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year or more. They're living in San Fran. And the crime's just getting out of control. And, you know, and for good reason, because it's supported by a lot of, you know, what, unfortunately, what's written. Uh, they use tile trackers and cards to follow them. Yeah, yeah, people are getting smart. I mean, they're, this isn't like the old the old school days. They're they're getting very smart. And that is definitely going to pick up. You can probably get one of those things on Amazon for next to nothing, from what I've heard. Uh, let's see, don't worry. Yep, 90% of LA will be a huge slum. I personally think that's why I sold my house there. I personally think that the time to buy in LA is probably going to be around late 2023, 2024, and you buy it, and hopefully things turn around later. But I think a lot of people are going to get wiped out with what's happening. Uh, cesspool, definitely. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what I can read. Um, CA, just slide off into the ocean. This whole crime didn't pay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. Why is LA bad? What made it that way? Um, unfortunately, a variety of things made it that way. It, it, it's not a, a very simple answer. A variety of things. High cost of living, but the high cost of living, unfortunately, is supported by a variety of different policies. There's things such as uh, rent control. That's not the core reason by any means, but rent control, essentially what that does is it incentivizes tenants to stay inside of the units, right? And so there's less housing stock available. And when there's less housing stock available, the available housing stock becomes more expensive because there's more people fighting over that housing stock. And then what happens is you have these additional zoning policies, which make things very challenging to build out additional housing. So you have an affordability crisis there. Cost of living, everything is very, very expensive. And then you have policies that are, unfortunately, that support that supports certain things that make that city really bad. You know, they, it supports like what I'm reporting on right now, which is crime. It supports dependence on the system. It supports, there, there's just so many things. Like, I got to be careful what I'm saying, but like, there's, there's a lot of things in Los Angeles right now that are, I think, the beginning. They're at the beginning stage of a series of problems, almost like a tsunami building up. I've heard so many stories in Los Angeles, even before all this stuff happening, but they kind of just grew over time. But ever since like 2020, 
beginning of 2021, it, it just got worse. Like, for example, that house that I sold in L.A., when it was under construction, this was like, I don't know, 18 months ago. Someone threw a big, like a brick cinder block thing through the back window, went inside, kicked in the drywall, and tried to you know grab as much as they could. The neighbors ended up calling the cops. And then maybe six months later, someone else broke into the back house. And then when they broke into that back house, I had someone that was very close by. They ended up detaining one of the suspects. It, it, it was... This is all happening inside of a series of, you know, six, seven months. And that that house was a, you know, a million plus house. That's just the, the way that L.A. is going right now. It, everyone's looking for their come up you know, inside certain communities that they see opportunity in. Now, that's the state of California today. You know, it's bad. I, I have a, a good friend of mine that owns a house, a several million dollar house in Los Angeles that person doesn't even want to live there. They do not want to live there. They're doing like an Airbnb scenario and they left Los Angeles because of the fear of being in Los Angeles. And the community is one of the most exclusive communities in the city. They left. And the reason that they left is again, not just the safety, but just everything that's happening. They're not sure what the future looks like. So they figure it's better to relocate for the time being Get some income in, coming in, you know, through Airbnb, put that money in their pocket, get another place, stay there, not have the stress of being there, and then they can always bounce back. They can bounce back and back, bounce back and forth. And they're doing short-term leases less than 30 days so they don't get dragged into, you know, all the mud through, you know, the eviction moratorium, all that stuff that's happening there right now. We're past security guards. It depends. You know, not talking just one or two because the lady that ended up in Truesdale Estates that I reported on last week, ended up passing away. They had one security guard on site that was not good enough. So you you might need three to four to five or more, you know, depending on the community that you're in, depending on the community that you're in. It actually might make sense if you're very well off to just drive a beater car as well. You know, have, have a beater car that you drive out to the city, not to draw too much attention to yourself. I'm thinking of um, going, let's see here. The real headline I saw today. Yeah. The sudden and troubling rise of private police force in downtown Portland. Crime in Los Angeles is out of control. Yeah, we're, we're building up to something. That's my house. <laughs> Didn't know you were alive. You must be hitting the right chords, bruh. I moved out of California 2021. Same here, 2021. Beverly Hill is... Beverly Hills is not L.A. County. You're right, but Beverly Hills Post Office is L.A. County. And the Palisades is L.A. County. And all of the other communities are L.A. County. Uh, beautiful, but can you defend it at night? You know, I had a conversation with my wife. I told her that your house, or the house is only as good as your ability to defend it. There's a lot more gated communities. Uh, well, so in Los Angeles, the ones that I'm, you know, familiar with, you have Bel Air Crest, you have... Um, Beverly Park, you have, I can actually walk you guys through. So for, let's see here, you have, I mean, the prominent communities communities anyway that are gated. So off of, off of Mulholland, let's see here, off of Mulholland, Laurel Canyon. So off of Mulholland, a really, actually one of the first big houses that I ever sold was off of tallest place here for four and a half million bucks, right when I first got into real estate. Um, this community here is gated community. It's very, very small. I mean, there's only like five or six streets here. So you have this community, which is gated. Um, you have obviously Beverly Park, which I've mentioned. You have two or three tiny little uh, communities inside of Bel Air. Um, but for the most part, there's really not that many gated communities in West LA. I would probably, if I had to ballpark it, I'd probably say there's five, five or six, but the actual amount of homes inside of these communities, it's not by the thousands, it's only by the hundreds at most, at most. And the security you drive through, it's one, generally it's one security guard. There's one really famous community, Charlie Sheen, um, Paris Hilton, a lot of people lived in, and this is right, we'll walk you guys here, let's see here. 
Um, so it's cold water. Mm, it's right here. This community right here. So you had Charlie Sheen lived here, Paris Hilton, a lot. But look, at, this is this is essentially the the size of this community. This is like pretty traditional, right? And so it's it's not as if you have a thousand homes I mentioned. You have you have a couple houses here. I mean, you have five or six little streets. You have the main strip here, and then but all these homes here. I mean, for example, nine and a half, thirteen point nine, twenty one million bucks. This is a an expensive place to be. And what I think is ultimately going to happen is I think a lot of people are going to say, "Hey, I might lease out my home, or I might sell it, or I might just." Um, you know, leave it vacant for the time being, and I'm going to go get a ranch, and I'm going to bounce back and forth. If you can spend 21 million bucks or even 10 on a house, you can go to Texas and buy a ranch for five million bucks on 200 acres. Uh, Mark Cuban just bought a small town in Texas for two million bucks, and I think it was on 77 acres. I think it was 77 acres, but. Yeah, I think it was, uh, he bought an entire town and it was originally listed for 4 million bucks. And I'm almost positive it was like 77 acres. But I think that, you know, people are doing this uh, 70 acres. Um, no, hold on. Uh, that wasn't it. They were talking about adjacent. Seventy-six acres. Okay, so he bought it for seventy-six acres, and so he only paid a couple million bucks. It was listed originally at four million, but I think that's going to become more common. You know, when we look at what's happening in LA and all these other places. We're going to start to see people with money start to grab uh, assets that they can, you know, relocate and position themselves away from the big cities. What do you guys think about this? Do you guys think that's going to be a bigger trend where there's going to be more and more people that are going to say, "Hey, it might." Uh, it might make more sense to start buying properties outside of the city. If crime continues growing at this rate, a lot more gated communities. Yeah, I mean, but the problem with uh, with places like Los Angeles, for example, it's not as if you can just throw a gated community in anywhere. It's, it's highly regulated. That's the thing. With, with LA, it's pretty hard to just get things done. You have to, you have to climb through a million different... Um, you, you have to climb through a, a lot of different layers to get there, especially today. There's a lot of delays in the court system. It's not just going to flow through. They have a lot of backlog over the last two years. The The real estate market, for example, if you're trying to evict a tenant today in, in Los Angeles, you're probably looking at 12 months or 18 months just to get in front of a judge. So for you to build out a new gated community, I'm not sure whereabouts you would do that because you would need, you would really need to be the perfect, the perfect location for a gated community. It's not like you could just throw one in East LA. You would need the perfect location um, to qualify probably for a gated community. And you would need everyone in that community for the most part to be on board with it. You need to pitch up money for an HOA, which would cost additional expense every month for everybody there. You would need security and infrastructure. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. Um, they can give, let's see here. John, where does the average guy go look for a couple hundred acres? Um, Let's see, 20, 60, 100K or something, you need 30% down. So the thing, what I think is ultimately going to be a big trend here with buying acreage, if you're going to buy acreage, if you want to kind of escape Los Angeles and escape the cities, you want to buy acreage where you're going to be associated, either have a natural water source directly or a well on the property. You're going to want your own water and you're going to want the rights to that water, not just be associated and be connected to water. You're going to want water rights. And you're going to want to ideally have a house on the structure. If not, at least have the land and have a plan for that land. Whether you're going to put a manufactured home there, you're going to have a prefab property that's going to be dropped on the on site. There needs to be a plan for it. And then third, you're going to want to make sure that the laws are going to be beneficial for the property owner. So really strong property laws, such as Tennessee and Texas. Tennessee has some really great property laws. Texas and Florida are homestead states, which are great for taxes and also great for protecting yourself uh, financially against any type of uh, uh, lawsuit or anything like that. Those two states are going to be great for that. So you want to just you want to make sure that 
wherever you're going to buy land, you're going to be able to buy it for obviously a good price per acre. You're going to want to be in a good, good area, good community around like-minded people with a natural water source with water rights. And you're going to want to have a really good plan. So I wouldn't get so much caught up on the price per acre and all that. I would get caught up more on where you actually want to be and then build out a plan around that. Um, Homestead states. Yeah. Homestead's really just, uh, Florida and Texas, Florida and Texas. People don't really, I think, give enough attention to Homestead. Look into it. It's important. It's very important. Homestead is, it's like, for example, OJ Simpson, when he got into his big mess that everyone's familiar with, what he did when he was getting sued for all of this money, he went right to Florida and bought like a $30 million mansion with some huge sum. Uh, he put all of his money into a house in Florida. And he's like, okay, if he gets sued, they can't touch the, the liquidity inside the house. You know, um, interesting. I didn't know that until, you know, two years ago. I didn't, I didn't know anything about that. I just, he started learning more and more and more just as reading and um, as time has went on. But yeah, property law, homestead. I live in LA. It's gotten worse since I moved here two years ago. Yes. Uh, homestead, also Nevada. I haven't heard of that. I'll look into that. Uh, no, they should stay in the cities because it could get better and the real estate market could go to the moon. Well, I personally agree that uh, I think the cities generally will come back, hopefully. I think maybe in a couple of years we'll see that. But I think what we could see first is a lot more of this, what we're seeing now. Um, and then I think ultimately we're going to hit like rock bottom. And then at that point, when a lot of people are bleeding out, you know, they can't hold on to their properties. They can't hold on to the assets. The businesses are struggling. Crime's really picking up. At that point in time, that's probably when you want to start looking at opportunities to buy and to invest. Right now, I think that most people are kind of, you know, it's not yet real. It's not real for them just yet. They don't think that this is happening. They don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, give it give it six months, and I think that a lot more people will pay more attention to this. Um, America is in the decline. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very, to me, it's very... Um, fascinating when we have the big funds blackrock all the big funds they're taking so much money and they're not investing it in america they're putting it in places like china and they're putting it in other places investing in other countries uh japan for example they're investing it elsewhere and to me what that says is that they see more really more potential or more stability in the way that those countries are being run than compared to like say america so I do believe that, unfortunately, that America is in the decline for the time being. I'm hoping that all that kind of changes. I'm hoping that that changes. But it, to me, looks like we're not going to see that change anytime soon. If we were going to see that change, we probably would have saw it last year. But it seems like we're kind of continuing down this road like this. I'm in New York right now. And what I've experienced in the last 10 hours of being here, it's unbelievable. I would have never, ever, ever thought what is happening here could ever happen, ever. I mean, I'm at the, uh, the like a pretty nice hotel, right? At a hotel, and they just asked me to leave the lobby because I refuse to do, you know, X, Y, and Z and show something. So they had like two security guards asked me to leave. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll no problem. I'm like, huh, this is crazy. I would have never thought that this could happen. Never. Even like going out to the restaurant, nope. Like you can't do anything. And it's, so you, you think about that. It's like, okay, for me, I'm like, that's not a problem. No problem. Right. But if half of the other people in the population say that is a problem or that they're in financial, pro financial stress, what are they going to do? They're not going to have the option of just saying, okay, I'll just go to the hotel room and Uber eats it or, or just hang out there, you know, pick up a book, read. No, they're going to do what they have to do to survive. And that's why I think that we're going to be stepping into more problems because I think what's happening in New York is going to continue happening in LA. And I think that there's not going to be enough police to defend. That's, that's the sad reality. Um, never been to New York, but always wanted to see it. Maybe not. Yeah. I, uh, I went to New York last year. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. This was like 18, 19 months ago. Like it was awesome. Ever nobody was in the city. Uh, the hotels are on, you know, 80, 90% off and nobody wanted to be here. I'm like, yeah, I went, got great 
you know, five-star restaurants delivered. It was incredible. It was so inexpensive. The weather was perfect. I'm like, I'll never, ever get to see New York City like this the rest of my life. I was telling my wife this. I'm like, we're going. And we went there, and I was right. We'll never see New York like that ever again because now it's, like, unrecognizable for me personally. It's unrecognizable. Um, I've been in San Francisco since 1950 and born and raised here the whole state. Yep. I still think we'll come out okay. Yeah, so do I. I think that uh, we will come out okay. I just think that it's probably going to – it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's what I think. I think that ultimately at the end it comes out fine and everything's going to be good. But I do think that we're going to step into some troubling times. That's what I'm, I'm believing. Some troubling times in the beginning and then, um, and then we'll, be, we'll be in the clear. But that's why it's so important now to follow this news. I, I just can't believe that this is a reality where they – when they literally say that Los Angeles – it's like the movie The Purge, and that they say that is literally like uh, 365 days a year. Instead of it being 24 hours to commit your crime, they have all day, every day, basically. Um, and wild. And then the district attorney here, if you don't know who this district attorney is, the district attorney... Like the everyone, like this is who they're he's getting funding from. So that's why I'm 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 a believer in thinking. You know what we have to all we have to do is look at what he, this guy wants, and he's the big player, right? And so what he wants is probably going to be more of that, and more of what is currently happening, um, at least from what I've read, at least from what I've read. So we look at top donors. 19 million bucks they pumped in. Finance backing by him, right? So, yeah, yeah, this is uh, fascinating to me. Palisades, the most expensive, my my belief anyway is it's one of the most expensive communities. Like you look at some of these homes, they are phenomenal, like absolutely phenomenal. 46 and a half million bucks. So I'm going to show you one of these. So 46.5. Like imagine you live here, like this is your house, and you're worried to go out to the store because someone could see you or see your car. Yeah, I mean, this is the neighborhood where someone just got, uh, they, 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 they found out there was a Christmas party or a holiday party. And they came in and busted it. And they they robbed the party. Incredible. That's this is a beautiful, beautiful house. All of these homes in this community, even like a, a less expensive home, 15, 15.9, 23 million bucks. This is on sunset, which you know, this is not my cup of tea by any means. Like, not that I could afford a $25 million house, but if I could, it wouldn't be in L.A. Um, but, I mean, like, over here, you'd probably be better off. $30 million bucks in the Palisades. You get, like, a farmhouse on, I think this is a Malfi Drive. Like, you can tell when they, when someone has money, they even have the dog posing in the picture. Like, just perfectly blending in. Perfectly staged. You can just... And that's the other thing with the internet, too. They can, People can see, you know, who's been living in the houses, if it's staged or not. They can be like, oh, that's staged by Meredith there. No one's living there. Um, and they'll, they'll know the stagers. These criminals, are they're very, very smart. And now with the internet, people can... They can see these opportunities. Nice guest house. And to me, this looks like it's nice. It's a nice house. I'm not sure that if it were anywhere else, obviously, it would be a lot less money. But, you know, you spend the extra money to be there. But if you don't have the safety, why would you spend the money, right? 20, 30 million bucks is on Rustic Lane. And let's see what this, the 
they were saying it was worth 9.9. .9, so probably a flipper bought it, 9.9. .9, and then, let's see here, price activity, they don't share it with you. But they're basically saying that it, it was trading at around 32. I don't know how that worked out, but yeah, fascinating, guys. Um, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted on this, but pretty wild. I'm going to look at one more house, though. This is really interesting to me. 79.5 to be on San Vicente Boulevard. Is this even... Is this a rendering or is this a real house? No, it's a real house. Yeah, but like these pictures, they literally give you almost the layouts of the property, especially if they have Matterport. Matterport gives you a virtual tour. So you literally can just like walk through the property. So you can go on there, go on Matterport and walk through the front door, make a right, be like, okay, go up the steps. There's a master bedroom. There's three bedrooms on that right corridor wing. There's three um three units and they uh, three bedrooms in the guest house they get the full layout of the land uh i think we could be stepping into a situation where we start seeing more pocket listings what a pocket listing is it's a traditional listing simply just not listed on the mls so people you only get access to it if you have a realtor or a direct connection with a realtor but they were actually trying to make these um illegal they were saying that no they don't want that they want you to list it publicly but I think that this will this will become more popular if people start becoming um, a little bit more conscious of their safety. Yeah, it's a nice house. And the lady that she just, uh, I think it was her, so her uh, husband was in the, the rock, or the, uh, what was it, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And she, they lived on Mater, which was, I think it's, let's see here, Wallace Ridge. Let's see if there's anything listed here. So right around here. And they lived, I think it's, let's see here. It's like one, of the, one of the streets right here. Um, but 55 million bucks. Is, is your neighbor, 55 million, and someone broke in with a full security guard. And her husband's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and her daughter's husband, the CEO of Netflix. And they were targets, and she ended up losing her life over it. So you just think there's nobody that's uh, untouchable, especially in Los Angeles. Look at this, this a beautiful house, absolutely beautiful house here. Stunning. Like that is incredible. And Beverly Hills, 55 million bucks. They spent a fortune on this house. You can just, you can see the money reeking all over the place, up and down the walls. 55 million. And let's see what that listing history is like. like you got to love the, uh, the market in Los Angeles. This is why people make so much money in the market because in LA, if you buy the right site and you can pick a, you can pick a neighborhood before this was possible more like seven, eight years ago. You can pick a neighborhood before other people saw the potential. This was very popular in the bird streets. Um, very popular, even a lot of Truesdale, a lot of different neighborhoods. As long as you had a really good site with a really nice view, if the house is a complete teardown, you can go in there and spend the money. And at the end, people will write the check. They'll come from all over the place and write a big check to be there. Now, you know, now LA is, uh, I think, at a very unique. It's at a very unique period to where we're going to see how people feel about their safety, and I personally don't think that we're going to see like a huge influx of of wealth leaving because I think a lot of people actually buy these properties almost as almost as a, as like their own bank account. So like they can go out there, they can put, let's say they buy a $50 million house, they go put $15 million down, right? They're getting killed with inflation anyway. They put $15 million down. They finance the 30 or 35 million at 3% or two and a half percent from, you know, their private bank. And they, they live there. So they use it as a tax deduction and they live there. And over time they grow it that way. But what I do think could happen is that they hold on to these houses 
but they also end up being more inclined to get a ranch and to have a, a second home. And that a lot of people though that are buying 50 and $15 million homes already have multiple properties. But I think we're gonna see more people spending uh, time away from Los Angeles as, as things pick up. But uh, I'll keep you guys posted on what happens here. And I'm gonna give you guys a live stream. I think I'm gonna do like a meetup or something in Los An or in New York, because I'm here now. Um, meet some people and learn about what's going on. I had one guy email me telling me about his family's real estate portfolio and all the problems that they're going through right now in the real estate market and the economy in New York. They have to liquidate properties and all do changes. I think I'm gonna bring him on a live stream and he's gonna walk us through everything that his family is dealing with in New York so that that way we can look at that information and see how that translates or communicates with other markets such as Los Angeles, Miami, and other areas so we can make smart investing decisions accordingly before everyone else becomes aware of all these big changes. So hit the notification bell to join the next live stream. Consider subbing. I'll catch you guys later.